Okay, I got hit with the deadline and I submitted this project. I wanted to show you quickly on video how you submit. You turn off any rasterized images. So that would be the, uh, the screen grabs or the PNGs that you were using as your guiding image, either in the background or on top. Those you turn off. You don't need to delete them. You just turn them off. So that the only thing showing are vector shapes. If there are any vector shapes you want to not see, you just click those off. And then you're going to save it as a Photoshop file like you have been. And then you're going to save a copy. We did a JPEG for our Cartoon Jumble. For this, we're going to save it as a PNG, which will save that transparency. And you can save right to your desktop and then move it into your digital art folder. I'm, I'm moving it, because my desktop's dirty, I'm moving it directly into my Exercise 2 folder within my digital art folder. So you can see the PSD is there. I'm going to mark that with green. That's what I'll keep working on. And I have my online file format here. Now a PNG, when you have nothing, you see how it's gray there instead of white? And that's because that is a free-floating icon now. And then you simply post that into your assignment, right? And you do that just, I know we're just getting used to it, but like we did for our last exercise, right into the exercise to place. I want you to give your name and the name of your book, the band book. And you can always post process shots, but what's required for this is your, your finished PNG. Now the problem is, it's good to be self-critical. We did a little presentation critique. We talked about what tools were most helpful. The warp tool, organizing layers, custom shape tool, all the different vector shape tools. That's helpful, but if I'm critiquing it, it doesn't look like a teenager. It's just like, you know, a 45 year old and a hipster. So I can add some, some more work to it, but I can also add some layer styles. And this is under bonus finishing extras in these directions, where I can add kind of drop shadows, some texture, and maybe help it pop a little bit more and add other elements as I see being necessary. So I'm doing this, this quick little extra video to have some fun with it. So the first thing, I wanna make that hair, which comes from that, that Fox custom shape. I wanna duplicate it and make it smaller And maybe stretch it, holding down Shift. I'm doing Command-T. I'm getting good at that. And maybe warp it some more. I want to turn it into a highlight. To kind of show how greasy this hair is. But it reflects a lot of light. And so to do that, I also need to change the color of it. I'll try bright white, but that's going to look a little too strong, right? So then find maybe slightly bluish gray. Give the right effect. Something like that. And then I might use another custom shape. Let's see, maybe leaf and tree, some organic shapes. That's too picky. It's so random, the, the ones they include. Boats and flowers. You can also load your own vectors into these, but we haven't learned how to make vectors yet. So let me try, let's try this one. Panther. 
I'm going to tilt that. Use the move tool, move it into place. Yeah, that works pretty well. Maybe play with its color just slightly. And then warp it, Command T, because I don't want it to look too much like a panther. Even though I need to research it, I haven't read the Outsiders in a long time, but their, their um, street gang might even have a name like the Panthers. And that would be like a nice subtle nod to it. And then I can maybe take that same element, duplicate it as we do, make it brighter. And then transform it with Command T and warp it. Give a little bit more distinction. That might be too much. I think it's the right idea. Let's stretch it out more. Because the thinner the highlight, the kind of greasier it will look. And remember, even though we call these vector shape tools, they're actually paths. So when you pre-transform, you're pre-transforming the path according to Photoshop and not the shape. So maybe something kind of like that. There we go. I can duplicate that. You notice I'm leaving like a, a black stroke on each of these, which gives it's subtle because the hair is dark, but it gives a lot of depth to it, kind of layering. And then I might want just a really, another duplicate, a really small hint of that. Take some of these, duplicate them, really transform them smaller. Flip this vertical. Even though we're not making our own vector shapes, we're definitely making pretty custom weird shapes, right? And then I can continue to use these in different ways. Hold down shift, I can select multiples, duplicate both of them, move them over to the sideburns, stretch them out, holding down shift. Doesn't make him look any younger, but it does make his hair look greasy. Which is one job. It's all about the hair. If your hair is wrong, your whole life is wrong. To quote someone. So this is going to be a little too copy-pasty. 
which means that you see like a little bit of an overuse of repeated elements. So I'm going to show you how you can do that, but maybe play with the opacity of them so they're more subtle. And yeah, so we've got some more dynamic hair for sure. Maybe copy these, maybe just one layer of it, and use that on the other side there. So even though we have a lot of symmetrical design, we don't need it to match in every way symmetrically. We flip that vertically. And this is at a lower opacity. And we can play with the color. Something like that. I take the color down of this one a little bit, maybe just take its opacity down a little bit. Okay, so now this shape I want to change. It's definitely making him look old. So I'm going to shrink that up and maybe warp it a little bit. That looks a little younger with the glasses. I'm just going to leave the glasses as is. If I made them black, they wouldn't quite work. But what I can do is put an oval underneath the glasses. Because I said these were sunglasses, and right now they don't look like it. So I'm just going to do a simple lens like that. And then use Command left bracket to move that down under all of these different vectors. So it's on top of the eyeball, like so, and then play with its opacity. So they look like sunglasses. Right. And then I can duplicate that and bring it over to this other side. The problem is when it's black, let's see. When it's just black with a lower opacity on top of the yellow, you can see how it just matches the glasses, the brown of the glasses. So I'm going to change the color here to where it has more purple in it, even though we want one to be more clearly a black eye. So how do I change the color? I double click within it, and then I'm going to go to the purples. move the, the black from there to a grayish purple and then I can up the opacity until I think that looks right. And then I want to move that so that the black pupil is still above it. So I move that down. Gotta take that black pupil though and move that up above it. Remember, just like stacks of paper. And then the thing that was over the pupil, move that above. And I'm gonna change this color to the shadow color that's there anyway. Change this color to the shadow color that's there anyway. And then I can play with the opacity of that if I think that helps. And it's not super clean, but that will 
I can even, if I'm at a super clean, I just go to 